Today we're going to learn the fine art of canoeing. Sean, watch out! What's wrong? Whoa! Remember, a canoe is extremely light and, and tips over very easily, so uh, you must be very careful getting into one. Ow! Canoeing is one of camping's greatest pleasures. Oh, the water whispering by you as you glide si oh, silently along. The gentle breeze ruffling your hair. Ooh. And the, the, the gentle splashing of water against your face. Oh. Ah! <gasps> <laughs> While we're enjoying the canoe ride, let me tell you another story about water. It all started the day little Binky volunteered to water our vegetable garden. This hose must be busted. A big hose, that's what I need. Uh, I want to make those vegetables grow. No way I'll eat them, though. Huh? Gotcha! Whoa! At that very moment, I was busy catching up on, you know, world events. You know, Iggy? Summer camp would be totally cool if it just had one thing. An escape clause? No, surfing, catching an awesome wave, hanging ten as you shred the tube. Man, I can almost hear the surf. Uh, oh, I can too. Ah. <laughs> Way to go, Eggy. Tubuloso moves, dude. Me, Tubuloso? Can you believe it? I'm a totally tubular surfing dude. But that wave wasn't all fun and games. By the time it was over, the campgrounds were completely waterlogged. I can't get this mud out of my hair. Now I'll never look fabulous. But you always said mud packs were good for your complexion. Who? Oh, this is all your fault, Binky. Ah! Oh. oh, Binky. I'm sorry, Vanessa. I was only trying to help. Please, Binky, stop trying to help. You're too small. Okay. Are you proud of yourself, Vanessa? Making little Binky feel bad? You're right. I guess I was a little rough on him. But not having my hair just right always makes me so cranky. Binky did what he always does when he's feeling low. He climbed a tree. Nobody likes me on account of I'm so small. I wish I had a friend the same size as me. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Hi, you want to be best friends? All right. Meanwhile, Robin, worried about Binky, had gone to the forest to look for him. Binky, yoo-hoo, Binky, Binky. Hey, wait. Binky, where are you? Here I am. Oh, you scared me. Well, you scared away my best friend. Your best friend? In a tree? He's a bird. Here's one of his feathers. Hmm. Where have I seen that kind of feather before? He's a great big bird with a million different colors and two big things on his head. That definitely sounds familiar. Let me look it up in my bird book. That's him. That's the one. But that's a twin-crested nut warbler. They're extinct. It did not stink. Watch what you say about my friend. No, no, it's stinks. It means there aren't any more of them. But I tell you, I saw one. Okay, did it make a call like this? Uh-uh, uh-uh. Uh-huh. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Jeep! Uh-uh, uh-uh. Hi, best friend. Pinky, you found a twin-crested nut warbler. You're going to be famous. Hey, keep the line moving. Imagine an honest-to-goodness twin-crested nut warbler. Big deal. Yesterday, I got an autograph from a double-breasted seersucker. Now what? I got one from a yellow-bellied tag stodger. I beat you both. I got Elvis's autograph, and that was just last week. We all awaited the arrival of Dr. Morton Flysacker, the world's leading authority on birds. Dr. Flysacker, I presume. I have that pleasure. Uh, now, which of you supposedly cited the alleged twin-crested nut warbler? Binky here did. If this turns out to be a fake sighting, someone's in a lot of trouble. Mm. 
Meanwhile, the news of the twin-crested nut warbler had reached Rex de Forest. If they find this bird, they'll declare these woods a sanctuary, and I'll never be able to build my condos here. That's why we have to find it first. Yeah, how's that bird called go again, boss? <clears throat> like so. Oh, look, boss! Here it comes! Give me that! No way! I saw first! Oh! Okay, you can have it! Yeah, good thinking, boss! You really used your head! Oh, I me! It was already dark, so we decided to search for the twin crested nut warbler the following morning. It was one of the longest nights of my life. Dr. Flysacker not only looked like a bird, he slept like a bird, too. But then I came up with a perfect solution. Sleep tight, Dr. Flysacker. Ah, 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 ah. Hey! The only good part was that Rex DeForest was spending a sleepless night, too. Yeah, sorry, boss. Just how why did I ever hire anyone as stupid as you? Uh, let me guess, because I'm the only one who will put up with your withering insults and devastating put-downs? Oh, close enough. You have a bird brain. Interpret for me. What's it saying? Uh, it's definitely saying it's hungry. Well, then he better find it something to eat. On reading the bird watcher's manual, Rex discovered that the nut warbler only eats a species of blisterberry that grows on the north side of Sneaker Peak. Hurry up! I can't hold this thing much longer! Almost done, boss. Just one more berry. Oh. Wow! Yes! Oh, hi, boss. You come for the blisterberries? Here, take them! Boy, I hope the warbler likes blisterberry juice. Meanwhile, the girls came up with their own idea. They dressed Binky in a twin-crested nut warbler costume that they'd made themselves. Let's hope this lures that nut warbler back to that tree. It's beautiful, Dr. Flysacker. Well, if it doesn't work, at least you'll look good for the present photos. Okay, Binky. Now let me hear that bird call again. Here goes. <laughs> well, how was it? I'd better put on more makeup for those pictures. Okay, Binky. Here's the spot where you saw the bird. Well, aren't we there yet? Any minute now, Dr. Flysacker. It's them. Quick, Binky. Up in the tree. Well, we're here. This is the tree where the bird was spotted. Well, I'd better spot it again, for your sake. Ah, 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 ah. It's my friend. He came out to see me. It's the nut warbler. It answered my call. And it came from this tree. See that? I told you my campers don't lie. Never mind that. Help boost me up. Uh, uh, of course. Uh, up you go. Hey, come on. Hey. Robin, what are you doing here? We've got to stop him. That Binky up there just does like a bird. Binky? In a bird costume? We're trying to lure the warbler back to where he first saw it. I, I gotta get up there. Oh, oh, uh, there we go. There we go. Uh, 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 uh. Well, what, what? Since when do twin crested nut warblers wear sneakers? Hey, Mr. Flushwater, let go of my leg. You're coming with me, you pint sized hoaxster. Ah, 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 ah. Hey, hey! What the hell? Stop, stop that! Oh, yeah. Warbler. It's not extinct after all. Oh, what a glorious moment in ornithological history. And best of all, that makes this forest a protected sanctuary. Right, and Rex the Forest can't build anything on it. That's what you think. Take a look. Ah, ah, ah. Bye. It's leaving. Along with your chances of holding onto this property, Candy. I'm afraid he's right. Without a twin crested nut warbler, it's no longer protected. Chester, call the bulldozer company and tell them to start rolling. You better not call them yet. Look it. Hey, anybody got any blister berries? 
Blisterberry. <laughs> you want Blisterberry? <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Campers, today we're going to experience the thrill of making our very own pottery. Doesn't that sound exciting? This is called a potter's wheel. First, we get it spinning like this. There you go. There you go. <laughs> then we plop on a glob of clay like this. <laughs> and you, oh boy, here we go. And you form it into a hollow shape. This is known as throwing a pot. There you see the way I'm putting my hand? Whoa! Looks more like the pot threw you. <laughs> I, I just did that to show you how exciting pottery can be. <clears throat> And speaking of excitement, let me tell you a little story. It all started in the Gimiguchi Woods, where I was teaching the campers about wilderness survival. All right, we've set up camp in the deep woods. Now let's imagine it's night, and the forest is filled with ferocious, hungry animals. Uh, I've got a better idea. Let's imagine I'm back at the lodge playing video games, which I will be. Iggy, there's nothing to be frightened of. By setting this snare next to the campfire, you can relax and get a good night's sleep. I could do the same thing by just fainting. How can we always have to hop? Why can't we just walk like normal animals? Because we're rabbits, that's why. And rabbits are supposed to hop. We're also supposed to twitch our noses like this. But why? Because people think it's cute. Cute? Don't ever use that word. I hate cute. Oh, this is what I think of cute. Oh, I better keep him away from those Easter jelly beans. All that sugar is making him hyper. There we go. I pity the ferocious beast that tries to sneak up on us now. <laughs> What a doofus! That thing couldn't catch a butterfly. Well, what do you expect? He's only a human. Ah, uh, look at the bunny rabbit! Yes, Robin, they're very cute. You're cute, Wolf! <laughs> now we cover it very gently. This trap has a hair trigger. Ouch! <laughs> it was triggered by a hair, all right. Actually, John kind of deserved that. Don't panic, John. I'll cut you down. No, Alex, don't. I landed in a patch of thorns, but luckily Nurse Molly was there to look after me with her gentle, healing hands. Oh, really, John? Oh, you don't have to go to such pain just to see me. Pain is right out. Oh, <laughs> why not simply come right out and ask me to dinner? Well, uh, I'd like to, you know, <laughs> but I'm, I'm afraid I couldn't sit down to eat dinner, you know. Phone call for you, John. Oh, great. Thanks, Alex. Saved by the phone bell. Mm. Whoa! Whoa! No! Whoa? Oh. Yes, this is Head Counselor Candy. <clears throat> this is the County Safety Inspector. I've had a report that your place is full of safety hazards. Camp Candy? Safety hazards? That's right. I'll be coming by to inspect it later today. By all means, sir. I, ooh, I, I, I'm sure you'll find it meets the, the, the highest safety standards. Oh! But little did I know that someone was listening in on every word I said. You mean Rexy Forrest III, that pretty guy who's always trying to tear down Camp Candy and put up a bunch of condominiums and parking lots in his place? That's amazing. How did you know? Hey, it doesn't take an Einstein. He does that in all your stories. Chester, my plan is working. Oh, what is it, boss? Let me hear. Will you please stop eavesdropping on my eavesdropping? Uh, sorry, boss. Ow! You bug brain baboon! Oh, I'd wring your neck if I weren't in such a good mood. You are? Of course I am! Can't you tell by my face? And all because Camp Candy is about to flunk that safety inspection. <laughs> the safety inspector would be arriving in a few hours, so I put the girls to work clearing all of Robin's animals off her bunk. As for Iggy and Binky, I assigned them the easiest job I could find, clearing the rocks from the shores of Lake Cacciatore. Oh, this place is no summer camp. <laughs> it's more like a prison chain gang. I think it's fun. I like carrying rocks. 
That's because you're only 40 years old. You haven't discovered self-pity yet. Hey, let's play pilot. Yo ho ho and a bottle of loot beer. No, Binky, don't! Poor Iggy and Binky. They looked like they were up the Cachatory Creek without a paddle. When we left Iggy and Binky, they were zooming across the waters of Lake Cachatory in an out-of-control motorboat. <laughs> But as luck would have it, just at that moment, Rex and Chester were walking by, discussing their latest nasty lowdown scheme. He's bound to find some infractions, and when he does, the place will be mine. What was that? Kids. You were right. It is a couple of kids. Hold on. Aren't you two brats from Camp Candy? That's right. We are. These kids are the answer to a prayer. As part of Rex's rotten scheme to close down Camp Candy, he brought Iggy and Binky to his lakeside lodge. Wow, what a humongous place. Well, my lads, it's all yours. Oh, no, you don't. I'm not getting stuck with your property taxes. I mean, you can have the run of the place. Really? You mean it? Word of honor. Did you hear that, Iggy? We can run around the place. Yahoo! Yippee! Oh, wow, Iggy. This is going to beat summer camp. Well, how long are you going to keep him here, boss? Just until that inspector realizes that a couple of campers are missing. Then he'll shut Camp Candy down for good. Meanwhile, keep those kids entertained. Uh, don't worry, boss. I know just what kids like. Uh, okay, listen up. Now, I'm going to teach you the game that we played all those years I was in kindergarten. Oh, boy. No! Meanwhile, realizing that Iggy and Binky were missing, we formed a search party to look for them. Hold it, everyone. I found something. Is that a clue? Better than that, it's a spotted salamander. Guys, meet Sally. <laughs> this phony sneaker trail is bound to throw them off the track. <laughs> Meanwhile, little Binky was having a really swinging time in Rex's lodge. Yippee! Hey, quit it! Uh-oh, I don't think he liked that. I'm gonna fix you good. Run, Binky, run! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Why are you not... Suddenly, we found what we'd been searching for. It was Iggy's footprints. I never realized Iggy was so athletic. Oh, John, I'm so glad I found you. The safety inspector was waiting back at the camp. Well, let's go back and get him. We'll need all the tracking help we can get. Oh, but, but, but when he finds out Iggy and Binky are missing, he's certain to close the camp. Ah, oh, that doesn't matter, Nurse Molly. The important thing is to find them. What's going on here? Boss, am I glad to see you. I don't think I could bear it another minute. No, no, stop. Don't ever mention the word bear. My precious lodge. And all my upscale possessions. Oh, they're totally ruined. Kids today, they got no respect for personal property. Get these two out of my sight. Good. We hate this place. Right. We want to go back to Camp Candy. At least there's lots of kid stuff to do there. You heard them? Get them out of here. Go, go, go! Yep, it appears that some of your campers are missing. Well, you see what happened was... Let's see, names of... Iggy and Binky! That's right, Iggy and Binky. <laughs> Who said that? We did. Oh, what, what happened, children? Where were you? It's a long story, Nurse Molly. We're both safe and sound and glad to be back. <laughs> Thanks for the use of your strong back and weak mind, Chester. Well, in that case, all present and accounted for. Congratulations, your camp has passed the inspection. Yay! 
If only the whole world ran as smoothly as Camp Candy. No, <laughs> Well, I, I do try to keep things running smoothly. I guess that's just the kind of guy I am. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs>